Hello everyone. Welcome to the new video of computer edit process synthesis. So in this video, I will explain you some important topics of mass transfer operation because those topics are very important in computer edit process synthesis. So we will quickly revise some important terms those involves in mass transfer processes. We know that I already told you that for computer related process synthesis caps for cap subject some basic things are required of the mass transfer operation some basic things of required of heat transfer and some basic things are required about CRE it is a chemical reaction engineering so in this lecture I will quickly revise about mass transfer operation things so there are some methods of conducting the mass transfer operation so those methods are you can see here several characteristics of this operation influence our methods of dealing with them and are described in terms which require definition at the start. So which are those things? First one is unsteady state operation. So what is the meaning of unsteady state operation? It is a characteristics of unsteady state operation that concentrations at any point in the apparatus changes with the time means whatever the Whatever the characteristics is there, what for example, I'm taking temperature is there or composition of any component is there. That is a changes with the time. If there is a changes with the time, means that operation is unsteady state in nature. If the property, any chemical property is not a changes with the time, that operation comes under steady state operation. Means in other words, I can say in weird manner definition, it is a characteristics of a steady state operation that concentration at any position in the apparatus remains constant with the passage of time. So in terms of concentration, I can say, but here we can take any property, not only concentration. So in this reactor system, in mass transfer, I'm explicitly taking composition of the reactant. Okay, so concentration of the reactant at any point, any position in the reactor, if that is a remain same, then that operation is known as steady state operation. And if that is a changes, that known as unsteady state operation. After that, next one is a continuous contact operation, or I can say differential contact operation. So, what is the meaning of that? You can see here. In this case, the phases flow through the equipment in a continuous manner. Ultimate contact throughout without repeated physical separation and recontacting. Means whatever is a flowing through our reactor, that is in a continuous manner. You cannot stop in between. Okay, there are two types of process. First one is batch wise and continuous. In CRE, you have studied this. Okay, so what is the meaning of continuous? It is continuously flowing without interruption, without external interference. interference. Okay, so next one is the batch wise. What is the meaning of batch wise? This is different than the continuous. I told you, continuous means continuously flowing without external interference. But in batch wise, in this case, the phases flow through the equipment in batches. Main objective is to get a required quality of product. So what is the major, major significance of the batch product, batch process is that in this process, we are, we are dealing with well-mannered process and second one, we are dealing with well quality of the product. Means in this main objective is to get a required quality of product. But main objective of continuous process is not a main, uh, main quality of the product, but in continuous contact process, there is a quantity is a more important than quality. But in batch operation, quality is a more important than quantity. You can see here in batch operation, quality is matters, but in continuous operation, there is a quantity is matter, not a quality. That's why we cannot interfere in between the process. So these are the four operations. In chemical industry, these are the major operation in all. First one is a steady state operation. Second one is the unsteady state operation. Third one is a batch operation. And fourth one, continuous contact operation. So I think you should, uh, you should you should have knowledge about these four basic operations. After that, design principles are there. So I told you, chemical engineers are exclusively dealing with the designing. So you have to design reactors for the manufacturing of any products. So there are various process flow diagrams are there. 
So by using those process flow diagram, you need to design various equipment which used in chemical industry. But before designing those equipment, you should have knowledge. Means you should know what type of parameters are going to be considered. Okay. So for example, I'm taking example of heat exchanger. If you are designing a heat exchanger, in that manner, you should know what type of tubes you are going to use, what is the thickness of those tubes, what is the diameter of those tubes, okay? These are the designing parameters. After that, you should know what amount, uh, what type of, uh, what type of temperature, what, uh, what type of fluid uh, which is going to handle, okay? How much amount of temperature it can withstand, how much pressure it can withstand. So all these things you should know. And these are the some important factors. First one, the, there is a number of equilibrium stages. Before that, we will see quickly about design principles. There are four major factors. Which are four major factors here? You can see here number of equilibrium stages. Second one, time requirement. Third one, permissible flow rates. And fourth one, energy requirements. So we will see one by one. So in order to so in order to determine the number of equilibrium stages required in a cascade to bring about a specified degree of separation or the equivalent quantity of continuous contact device, the equilibrium characteristics of the system and material balances calculations are required. So if you want, for example, I'm taking example of distillation. So number of distillation, if, uh, in, if I want to separate any fluid mixture, so I should know how much plates are involved in that separation process. Means you should know number of stages involved. And after that, you should know number of equilibrium stages involved. What is meaning of equilibrium stage? It is a such a type of stage. Outlet composition should be equal to the inlet composition. Means inlet composition of liquid and outlet composition of the vapor. That known as equilibrium stages. Means how much equilibrium stages are involved in a separation process, you should know. So this is a very important parameter while designing distillation work. After that, time requirement. In stage-wise operation, the time of the contact is intimately connected with the stage efficiency, whereas for continuous contact equipment, the time leads ultimately to the volume of length of the required device. The factor which helps establish the time are several material balances permit calculation of the relative quantities required of the various phases. So what is the meaning of this? In time requirement, you should know how much time it is, it is, it will take to separate any fuel mixture. So time requirement should be less. Okay, means if we are, our uh, process is efficient, it, it will take minimum time. Okay, if our process is not efficient, it will take maximum time. Means cost will be, operating cost will be increased if time requirement is increases. Keep in mind, our process should be optimum. Means that should be energy efficient. It should be profitable. So all these parameters are very important. After that, next one is permissible flow rate. Suppose I am having inlet, inlet reactant. Inlet, inlet is the reactant and outlet is the subproduct. A is the reactant. A and B are the reactant and C is our product. So A, a flow rate of A and B are very important. So in this, this factor enters the into consideration of semi-batch and steady state operation. Where it leads to the determination of cross-sectional area of the equipment. So if we are if we are going to find the cross-sectional area of any equipment, so we should know about the permissible flow rate. Then and then we can find easily cross-sectional area. So flow rate plays very, very good role and important role while designing the equipment. After that, consideration of the fluid dynamics establish the permissible flow rate and material balances to determine the absolute quantity of each of the steam required. And lastly, there is an energy requirement. I already told you energy should be minimum. That should be energy efficient. Our process should be optimized in such a manner that should take minimum energy but gives maximum profits. Means that should be energy efficient. Okay, so in which the main points are heat and mechanical energies are ordinarily required to carry out the Diffusional operations, heat is necessary for the production of any temperature change because we know that driving force for heat transfer is the temperature difference. According to second law of thermodynamics, heat transfer from the higher temperature to the lower temperature. That's why 
it is a very important temperature changes is very important in heat, in heat transfer so temperature so it is necessary for the production of any temperature changes for the creation of new phases such as vaporization of liquid and for overcoming the heat of solution effect so every process involving the energy requirement energy is ability to do work ability to process any any operation lastly mechanical energy is required for fluid and solid transport dispersing liquids and gases and for the operating moving parts and machinery so all these things require energy requirement so these are the very important things which we have seen in today's lecture first one there are various types of operation so i will repeat for you those operations are steady state operation unsteady state operation third one is the batch operation and fourth one is the continuous contact operation after that i told you chemical engineers dealing with designing so you should know about designing principles so designing principle you should have in your mind four things are very important first one is number of stages and in advance you should know equilibrium stages okay after that time requirement after that permissible flow rate means what flow rate it can be it can be permit okay after that energy requirement means our process should be energy efficient energy efficient means that should be optimized you have to optimize your process in a such a manner you have to modify your process in a such a manner that should its cost should be minimum and it should be profitable and energy efficient because if you are giving more and more energy means operating cost of that plant is increases so in your mind this four factors should be there so this is all about energy uh, this is all about design principle and modes of mass transfer operations by which you can carry out the various chemical operations so this is all about today's lecture in next lecture we will see next topic thank you